This video is going to be over solving inequalities. Um, I did include a snip here from the OpenStax text, textbook um, on the different notations that you can use. Um, in my solutions, I will be using the inequality part of the set builder notation. Um, I will also be using interval notation, and I'm also going to sketch some number lines as well so you can have a visual. Um, also, we need to talk about a couple properties. So if you have um, one number is less than another, and then you add that same number to both sides, then that inequality will stand. For multiplication, if you multiply by a positive, then the inequality stands. However, if you multiply by a negative, notice here the inequality sign switches the other direction. All right, let's look at example number one. In this example, I'm going to solve just like I would as if this was a linear equation, um, and then I will apply these properties. If I need to apply the multiplication property, I will do so as well. So just like with an equation, um, you can subtract the same number on both sides. So we would get something like negative 7 is greater than 10 and then minus 17. 10x, excuse me, minus 17. Um, again, I can also subtract 10x on both sides and get negative 17x is greater than negative 17. Now here is where our second piece of our multiplication property is going to come in. This is true for multiplication and division. If you multiply or divide by a negative, then my inequality sign switches. So this would be our inequality notation. I need numbers less than one, so my interval notation would look like this, negative infinity to one. And on a number line, say this is zero and this is one, I would do an open circle at one and then shade to the left hand side. All right, let's look at another example. This example here, I'm going to have to multiply through by a common denominator. So if I have four, eight, and three, and I want to figure out a least common denominator, that's going to be 24. So I'm going to multiply each and every term by 24. 24 being positive means I'm not going to switch the sign at all. All right, these would cancel and I would be left with six. These would cancel and I'd be left with three. These would cancel and I'd be left with eight. All right, so then I would have negative 18x is greater than or equal to negative 15 plus 16x. I'm then going to subtract 16x on both sides. Again, solving this just as if it was a um, equation. And I get negative 34x is greater than or equal to 15. When I divide by negative 34 on both sides, I do have to switch my inequality sign and I get 15 over 34. As a interval, I'm now going to include 15 over 34. And if I draw this as a number line, I would do a closed circle and make sure that I shade to the left. Sometimes I will also have inequalities on both sides of an expression in the middle. When that happens, you should split this up into two separate 
inequalities. I'm going to subtract two and then divide by two. Most of the time that we don't like it in this notation, we like it in this with X on this side. So I just switched my X and my one half completely, just like switched it around. Here, I'm gonna subtract two and then divide by two. And so let's graph this on two different number lines and know that it has to be the combination of the two. So I know that X must always be greater than or equal to one half. So closed circle. But I also know X must be less than two open circle. Therefore, if I combine my two solutions, I have a closed circle at one half, an open circle at two, and so my combined inequality would look like this. Oh, sorry, no, no equal sign down here. And then my interval notation, I'd have a closed bracket at one half and an open bracket at two. Now this is going to be very helpful for solving absolute value inequalities because we are mostly going to be solving things that look like this. So the absolute value of something in the middle less than K means that that value in the middle of the absolute value bars must be in between negative k to k. So I'm going to use that compound inequality type setup to say, oh, if I have this, then I know x minus one must be kind of like sandwiched between these two. Think about this in general. If I have absolute value of something and it has to be less than three, well, zero, one, two, those would be less than three. But then also if I had negative one or negative two and plugged it into the absolute value piece, those would also be less than three. But if I had negative four inside, I would no longer have an absolute value of negative four less than three. So like this, like the absolute value of negative four is not less than three, right? Because four is not less than three. So that's why this sandwich here, this compound inequality is going to happen. All right, I'm gonna set this up exactly like I just did the problem before. I'm going to add one to this side. I'm going to add one to this side. And so then I can kind of bridge these two together. Here's a number line of what that looks like. Open circles on both in between and interval notation would be like this.